In the comments section of one of my videos, I was confronted with the fact that I use I don't know and we're working on it multiple times. And they were right. I do claim that I and the scientific community do not have all the answers, but there's a reason for that. It's because we don't have all the answers for everything yet. There are large gaps in our knowledge. That in itself is not debatable. There are many things we currently do not know. For example, while we know how complex creatures evolved from simpler ones, we don't know how abiogenesis occurred. We have lots of theories, and have been able to replicate RNA forming in laboratory conditions, showing many ways it could have occurred. But we cannot say for certain, at this minute of this day, these exact chemicals mixed start a self-replicating chain. Logic says that abiogenesis did not have to be a common occurrence. It could be, and most likely is, exceptionally rare. But just once is all that was needed. The emergence of self-replicating molecules only had to happen once in the 4 billion year history of this planet, and in the blink of an eye, geologically speaking, this planet will become infested with life. The same goes for the creation of the universe. We can extrapolate our observations of the current universe to the tiniest fraction of time before the Big Bang. But we still don't know what happened to cause it. But just because we can't explain what caused it does not mean it did not occur. We know at one point, space started expanding and cooling at a very rapid pace. Why did it happen, and what happened just before it? We don't know. But we cannot discount the observations that have been made and the calculations we have used to work them out because we are still trying to understand the ultimate source of those observations. An example I like to use is plumbing. Just about all of us are familiar with how water flows. We can use our knowledge of gravity, pressure, and pumps to move and control water flow. We know that if we fluctuate its temperature, it will change form between solid, liquid, or vapor. Do we need to have an explanation to where water came from to know how fluid dynamics work? No. Do we need to understand how hydrogen and oxygen combine to understand that ice and steam are different forms of water? Of course not. Is the entire history of the universe need to know how water flows to the lowest point? No. Speaking of things flowing down, gravity is another thing we don't fully understand, but I doubt there's anybody out there who doesn't believe in it. How many out there think we don't understand exactly why or how mass affects gravity, therefore it is safe for me to jump out of the window of the 16-story building? No, and I don't recommend it. We have enough understanding of the observations of gravity to know that jumping out of a tall building would be a bad idea. Even if you don't have a perfect understanding of it, we know enough to make very good theories of what would happen if we were to fall from a great height. But, just because there are gaps in our knowledge, that does not mean we have free reign to insert anything we want into them. A God of the Gaps argument, saying what we don't know is caused by God, is simply not intellectually honest for two reasons. First, many, no, all the gaps we have filled in our intellectual knowledge have been with naturalistic explanations. It used to be believed that lightning was caused by God throwing thunderbolts down to Earth. Now we know it is caused by an imbalance of electrons. We used to think plagues were sent by ill-tempered spirits. Now we understand germ theory. The gaps keep getting smaller and have always been filled with naturalistic explanations. Second, we should only fill in the gaps of our knowledge with things we have evidence for. Assumptions without any evidence to back them up are useless. Saying God causes something without any evidence to back up that claim means your claim can be dismissed just as easily as it was made. If evidence comes to light that proves the existence of an intelligent creator being, then we will be able to draw on that evidence and possibly use that to fill in some of the gaps of our knowledge. We cannot ignore evidence because we do not like the implication it gives. But until any evidence is found to corroborate the existence of a god, then there is simply no reason to believe in one. We can honestly admit that we do not know many things about the universe. But it's completely dishonest to say, we don't know one aspect of something, therefore we have to throw out all of our observations and current understanding based on those observations, and any claims therefore have equal weight.